The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Appreciate you starting your day right here with TFNN. With me, we got the S&Ps this morning, clawing back some of yesterday's losses, up by 17 points right now. Trading at 43.79, we were as low as about 43.56 in the overnight session. We start trading higher at about 7 in the morning, and we're a solid 20, 23 points off of that low at about 7 a.m. Quite the volatility yesterday on two accounts, right? One o'clock, you get the bond issuance. Two o'clock, you get Chairman Powell. The question turns to whether you had one of the biggest banks out there that's hacked. Could that play into potentially when it came to clearing, when it came to treasuries? They had to reroute some treasury trades. You had a bond sale that had some problems yesterday. Was that calculated into that? Nonetheless, the markets accelerate lower. Now, where we're going to jump to is we have markets in the green this morning. We have Bitcoin trading higher yet again. Quite the volatility for Bitcoin yesterday. 38380 was the high. We're about $1,000 off that, but up almost 500 on the session. Crude, 76.71. You're up by almost a dollar on the price of crude. Gold trading lower by $18.80 at 1951. We just traded to 1947. You got to jump over to the dollar index when you're talking about gold. Dollar index, not quite the same volatility that you might expect, right? Dollar index right now almost flat from where we were as of the 2.33 o'clock time frame yesterday at 105.81. And we got to jump to notes and bonds. So we're up by 11 ticks right now. You, you have 10-year volatility. You got the 10-year yield at 4.57, almost 4.58 right now. Boy, we've been talking about it, and this might have been the test, man. We've been talking about the breakout of this channel and possibly getting a test, and maybe that was your test yesterday, right? Maybe that was a little bit of a one-two punch to put the market in check. Yields spiked yet again. We have the 10-year. You put this thing on a five-minute basis. The 10-year... From where we were Wednesday night going into that at 108.17, you trade down almost a full point and a half. And since then, we've bounced a half of a point. And maybe that's it. We were talking about it. That might be the retest of that channel line. And it's pretty interesting how close you got, right? You got to a price level of what? Let's see. 107.10. And we were thinking maybe 107.05. Something like that would be a test. Not bad when you got all the way up to 108.25. You almost got a two-point pullback in yields, causing them to spike yet again. And this might be it off to the races. I think the bar is going to be pretty high for them to hike again, even in light of some difficulties potentially issuing bonds, especially on a longer-term maturity, what you were talking about yesterday. And with what Chairman Powell was saying yesterday, and I, you know, he made some headlines. But nothing he said should have been too surprising, right? The data is going to depict what they do. And if they need to hike again, they are prepared to hike again. With inflation where it is currently, they are going to have to follow the data. But it's a very high bar at this point when he has said to you a week prior on their decision that the risks are now greater when it comes to hiking and the harm it may do to the economy versus not hiking because the policy rate is already so restrictive. So the bar is very high when you think about the fact that he has already stated they are in a restrictive policy rate, so the risk of not hiking is not as dramatic because they're already restrictive. It's just how restrictive they can be versus where the economy is, how high they are, the stress on certain areas. You already have bank failures, et cetera. So the bar is going to be pretty high, and I think the market got a little bit skittish yesterday. But it looks to be correcting itself today. And I'm not sure you're not going to get the same type of a sell-off. NASDAQ 100, you're already up 100 points off of the lows at about 6.30 this morning, trading at 15,313. Quite the drop yesterday. What, 250 points almost from 15,453. And boy, it was a quick drop right on that bond sale. You got a spike till about 1.30. And then things accelerated basically right into the close of yesterday's action. 
Okay, what else we got going on? You got to talk about the bank failure, man. World's biggest bank forced to trade via USB sticks after the hack. And yeah, I imagine you may see some capital expenditure lines in the next earnings for some of these banks spending more money on security. The unfortunate part is that it's probably a matter of when and not if something like this happens to a big bank when everything is electronic, especially if it can happen to the world's biggest bank. You're talking about Industrial and Commercial Bank of China Limited. Their U.S. unit had been hit by a cyber attack when they were unable to clear swaths of U.S. Treasury trades after entities responsible for settling the transaction swiftly disconnected from the stricken systems. That forced the bank to send the required settlement details to those parties by a messenger carrying a thumb drive as the state-owned lender raced to limit the damage. Um, yeah, and the workaround followed an attack by suspected perpetrator Lockbit, a prolific criminal gang with ties to Russia that has also been linked to hits on Boeing, um, Ion, and UK's Royal Mail. So interesting that comes out. They had trouble clearing some treasuries. You had a bond issuance problem yesterday. I was listening to Bloomberg this morning. They had some fixed income people on there. I forget the woman's name. She was somebody in fixed income, and she didn't even know. You know nobody really knows exactly, you know, if that could have been a dramatic effect that caused the one o'clock sell-off. You had Chairman Powell's words at two o'clock. He reminded everybody that they're going to be data dependent. But it shouldn't be too surprising, man. I would, I would keep bringing you back to the line, okay, that the risks are now weighted where it's more of a risk to hike. So the bar is much higher when the risks of hiking outweigh the risks of staying where you are and I've already said it, but I, I imagine this may be the bounce. And we got quite a pullback. You know, this is a daily channel line we're talking about. And when you put this chart on a five-minute basis, you basically touch that line. You put it on a daily basis, and it looks like you bounce right off it. And I think that's a pretty fair representation of where that line would be. I bet on a linear regression form, if you put this onto a computer, and you did a little bit of linear regression, talking about the squares of the distances away from each candle, probably would line up a little bit lower, to be fair, that you'd be looking for that test. But nonetheless, matching those tops, and it's consistent tops, going back to where you were in July, going back to where you were in September, and we got quite a turnaround when we started following this thing in the middle of October. Pretty remarkable. We've been talking about this channel line for more than a month now. We get the acceleration to the lows of 105.10. You spike breakout up to 108.25, and just like that, we pull back, we test, we get a bounce, and markets are positive as we come into Friday's trading. Especially interesting, we get inflation data next week, right? Uh, expectations are going to be for that data to show some weakening in inflation. That is the narrative right now. The market is correcting a bit off of yesterday's action, it looks like, right? Even the NASDAQ 100 had quite a sell-off yesterday. You just got a consolidation right near the highs of 15,500. We're trading at 15,323. You just made a run from 14,209. The NASDAQ 100 is up a uh, excuse me, 1,115 points from where it was trading at on October 26th. Keep your eye on yields. That's going to be the important one. We'll see if that's the bounce on that channel line. All right, folks, stay tuned. Come back. We'll be talking about some of the different equities that are moving on Friday. We'll take a look at those. We'll take a look at some of the other markets. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets in positive territory. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning with the NASDAQ 100 up about 65 points. We jump to Amazon shares on a five minute basis, getting a little bit of a lift up to about 141 from 140.60. Yesterday, you had all of them selling off, right? Check out Microsoft. Microsoft trades to 364.79. Is that, I was going to say, is that an all time high? Pretty close, within $2 of an all time high, right? And look at this, how it's challenging you had the peak in 2021 of 350 we'll call it 349.67 you did spike above that but on a weekly basis look at how that's just a tail where you got this july right to 366.78 realistically you had a consolidation almost approaching that 350 area though and this is the first time you have a real solid break above that price level of 350 you're trading at 360 right now but microsoft Uh, yeah, up about $2 this morning for Microsoft, 360.69. Quite the trade yesterday in terms of all of these from 365 to 360. You jump to Apple shares. Apple going to get a lift by almost a dollar in the pre market. Pretty remarkable, right? 16 billion shares outstanding. The market cap of that company going to get a lift by about $16 billion as of the open with an ask at 183.39 right now, almost a full dollar from where it was yesterday. We jump to NVIDIA shares. NVIDIA. Trading up about $5 to 474.66. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla, quite the trade yesterday to negative prices from 220 to 208. Look at that run, right? You're up to 210.30. And you jump over to Disney. It just didn't stop for that equity yesterday. You come into earnings at about 84.50. You open at 88. You trade up to 91.22. They did get a pullback on the market retracement. Disney trades to about 90 at the close yesterday. You're almost flat this morning. Now, interesting article in the journal i think it was last night or this morning when i was reading it this morning no not this morning at eight o'clock disney plots the future of its traditional tv networks right talking about abc fx um national geographic etc are they core to their business i had Iger had said at one point strategic value to the company not only its financial value okay and It'll just be interesting how this gets shaped. You have ABC, of course, out there. 
they have shows like The Bachelor, which are a big hit. They could probably be lumped in somewhere else, though. They really could, even though ABC is probably the gem of everything else going on outside of ESPN. Combining some of Disney Networks with A&E's lineup of channels, such as the History Channel and Lifetime, could help the joint venture forge better deals with cable companies and advertisers. Uh, so they have a lot going on, and they're just talking about the difference in terms of how they break that down. Excluding ESPN, Disney's traditional TV network saw revenue fall 9.1%. For the September quarter to 2.62 billion operating income from the networks was flat at 805 million during the period. Now, not a good scene when you got revenue dropping by almost double digits, right? On the other side of that, pretty remarkable that they're taking 805 million dollars to the bottom line income. They're only taking in 2.62 billion dollars, man. What is that? 35 percent margins or something like that on a business that's basically dying old network TV that they don't even value. You take out all the other networks, you take out ESPN, you're still bringing in 2.6 billion and you're taking 800 million to the bottom line. That's quite a number. All right. So that's Disney shares. You jump over to Netflix, NFLX. On a longer term basis, kind of coming up to the July 17th one. And then we get to Roku. And this is what I wanted to get to, too. Roku, man, they get quite a lift recently. Okay. Back this up even a little bit further. On their earnings, recent earnings, you go from 58 up to 86. You back off a bit. You're at 81. A far cry from where this thing was when it double topped out in 2021, early 2021, right? You see how really some of these pandemic darlings got ahead of the market in terms of peaking out early 2021. You had the Magnificent Seven carry the market to new highs at the end of 2021. You're at 81, well off where you were at 38. Well, I tell you, man, we got Roku's in the house. I've always been a little bit biased. But sometimes the kids especially jump around, and you'd be amazed at the type of programming that occasionally pops up that you can get for free on the Roku channel and other channels that they serve advertising for, they do deals for, they allow – uh, you know, you compare it to something like YouTube TV. I saw it pop up the other night. It's 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 almost akin with a guide, with channels, um, many different channels that you gain access completely free within the Roku channel. I'm sure I'm sure they're servicing ads or they're somehow getting a cut from those companies and the ads they're running, etc. But I found myself saying, "Geez, where's the value on YouTube TV when you got something like Roku and you get into their library and they have a plethora of shows that are basically free." along with, of course, the ability to upsell you to premium services. So I started looking at that one again, and, and the bummer of it is is that I saw that happen in my household uh, in the last week. I took a look at it and said, man, I wish I saw the kids finding that uh, October 26th or October 27th versus finding it um, in November when the stock just jumped from 55 to 85. But nonetheless, you jump over to the Analyze tab, Roku, right now, about an $11.5 billion company. Remember, ESPN, they're going to push out 30, 40 billion, just for context. Uh, Disney right now, let me push it, maybe 200 billion, 160, 160, 160 billion for Disney right now. All right, we got about six minutes till the opening bell. And what do we talk about next? Let's talk a little Amazon. Why not? Amazon, Amazon's top fresh exec says store reopenings are part of a broader grocery revamp. I would say so, man. When you think about it, they bought Whole Foods, they done, they've done very little over what five plus years is it or is it longer that they've had them uh they've re reopened three fresh supermarkets in the la area this week as the company continues to find refine its grocery strategy they have more work to do to win over customers uh, in the woodland hill store amazon removed the meat and seafood counter in favor of more packaged options based on customer feedback i don't know i'm a big fan of the the meat and seafood counter right versus prepackaged processed or even prepackaged i guess probably not as processed if they're pushing out the fresh idea within a whole foods type genre amazon fresh is the store but you know that's their mentality throughout yeah so they got three new amazon fresh stores a brand the company launched during covid to reach more of the mass market audience than whole foods for the revamp, Amazon put in about 3,000 new products to expand the selection after hearing from customers it was falling short in some categories. The coolest part is the scanning and all that stuff, right? Shoppers check out the sale items as they wait in line for the new Amazon Fresh store. Yeah, um, pretty cool. Yeah, you scan it, you walk in, you're a Prime member, etc. 
we take a look at Amazon shares. Yeah, it's been quite a run for them to start the year, man. From 80 bucks up to 145, you're pushing 14060 right now. I mean, if this is keep your eye on yields, okay? Because if that really is the test, man, you come down on November 9th yesterday, you pop from this morning's low. That's a nice test of the channel. You're trading higher pretty decisively. You're already almost a half a point off of that test of the channel line at 107.26. And we got the 10-year yield sitting right now at 4.58%. Think we're up 42 basis points off of where we were at 5%, just like that. 4.58 coming into Friday. All eyes will be on CPI data next week. But as I said, the bar is going to be very high for the Fed to hike when they already believe they're in a restrictive rate policy. I mean, hear the chairman's words, man. Uh, because five and a quarter to 5.5% right now with where inflation is, yeah, that's that's a real deal. Restrictive rate policy, I think, man. And so they're gonna try and keep it there. And the market's adjusting to that. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up about 20 points right now, trading at 4381. NASDAQ 100, you catch a lift by 63 in the pre-market. 60 points make it 15,316. You get the Dow up 162, 34,106 right now. We jump over to yields. 
You got a little bit of a pullback right now at 107.26. And so it's going to be interesting to see how this 10 year trades, man. And boy, we got some volatility just in front of us since, you know, I was up at about 545 this morning, 615, 630. I was starting to actually look at the market, look at things. So that was like right as this thing was at lows of 107.11. I'm looking at it where it was the lows last night at 107.10. I'm saying, you know, if it's going to bounce, this might be the area that it's going to bounce in. And if you're looking to either be in the market or be in yields, I would keep your eye on that channel line because you start decisively breaking above this red channel, uh, red, red candle that we got yesterday, and that's your breakout to the upside. You break back within this channel line to the downside, and then you you better watch out, man. You have a break back within this channel line. Not many people thought on October 12th when we were testing the top end of that line, folks, that we could have tested the bottom line by the end of the week. And that's what we did. So sometimes it moves ferociously and quickly. So uh, keep those fingers quick, but keep your eye on a critical area right now of where we are in the 10 years. You've got markets in positive territory. Disney shares down about half a percent. Let's see how we open here for some of the FANG stocks. Look at Apple. Apple up a percent. That's going to help the market. Microsoft up half a percent right now. Amazon in negative territory by two tenths right now. We jump over to Google shares, negative by three tenths. NVIDIA up by one. Look at NVIDIA, man, pushing highs, pushing basically all-time highs, up almost 1.2% for NVIDIA. We jump over to Tesla shares, slightly in the red. And you jump over to the news of Senator Manchin. Interesting, just from a political perspective, not a political show, but of course the Senate, very close. Uh, elections coming up in 2024. He is a Democratic senator from a state that's going to be very hard for Democrats to win. What I found most interesting about this conversation, looking for centrists, right, at a time then when everything is so partisan, I often talk about it, right, governments are to compromise, the truth lies somewhere in between. It's usually the case, not always, okay? Rumors out there yesterday talking about maybe Romney and Manchin or something like that as a moderate. Listen, Romney was a Republican governor of Massachusetts, man. Um, Republicanism in Massachusetts, folks, is much more moderate, in my opinion, than some of how things go recently. And I think it'd be really cool to see maybe that. I don't know how it would play out. It might even hurt Biden. Um, I'm sure it would play in some way. But nonetheless, that, I think, is where that's going. He's talking about, what do you say? He's going to... Um, he put out he's going to drive across the country or something like that. He's going to go on a tour, man. And uh, there was already something about maybe Romney or or, um, or him. Of course it was. All speculation. But that's where I found that most interesting. And boy, politics. It's a tough one um, in terms of going through it. He would have had a heck of an election either way. Always tough for him to win in that state as being the moderate Democrat that he is. But yeah, it'd be pretty cool if we somehow had... Uh, a third party. Not easily done in the system we have with, with two-party politics, but I think we're inching towards it more and more as you get the outside spectrum stretched further and further to the right and the left. It creates an opportunity in the middle. Uh, very difficult to do, but this might be the environment that's actually possible. All right, what else we got going on? Biden, he's going to meet with Xi coming up next week, November 15th. That's the same day that our man Larry Pesavento has a live trading webinar coming up, folks. We'll talk about that next. Um, but Biden and G set to meet on November 15th on the sidelines of the APEC summit. The leader's going to speak for the first time since last year at the G20. And uh, yeah, nonetheless, probably a good thing that you're speaking with your counterpart whenever you can. Communication, when possible, is always a good thing. You know, you start never talking to anybody. The last thing, that's where things can really get out of hand, in my opinion. But uh you, U.S. officials have downplayed expectations for any clear breakthroughs. I would agree with that. Nothing's going to get a broke breakthrough there. Stress that the focus is on clearing up misperceptions in the bilateral relationship. Well, we'll see if that gets done, man, because China's got one goal. I was talking about it last night in my household, talking about TikTok, right? We watched some of the Republican debate. Vivek out there. Um, listen, here's what I'll say, man. Bring it up, Nikki Haley's daughter. How old is um, – and this is the bummer. Here I am Googling – her daughter because Vivek brought her up, which is why she said it was scum. 
Um, 25 years old. You know, kids, and I was going to say under 18, cause 18 especially, so 25, I guess, bringing up your kids. Nonetheless, they were talking about TikTok, okay? And what they said is, if you didn't catch it, I guess Nikki Haley was giving Vivek grief for using TikTok. Vivek was saying that, well, her daughter's on it, right? And that's where things got personal, as as they would in anybody, as somebody who has a kid, okay? Don't bring up what my kid is doing. has nothing to do with the conversation to be leader and president of the free world. Because she can feel that way about TikTok, folks, and not control her 25-year-old daughter and have to take that conversation. Nonetheless, right, the conversation goes to TikTok. And... It's a state government application. It's it's different than private enterprise, man. I'm on that same thing. I am I I'm very uh, liberal, for lack of a better term, in terms of trusting. Whether it's you know Apple, you trust so many companies with so much information that you have. What I haven't done recently, and I'll I'll make a a comparison, right? TikTok can't do it. Can't get over the hump of allowing a state-owned application to be on my phone collecting all this data. Uh, the risk far outweighs the benefit longer term, especially for society. Then you add into it that TikTok is just showing people garbage in the US, right? Divisive stuff. They feed algorithms that just do whatever they do. Nothing like in China. We've all heard it, right? They show kids um, math, science, geography, education, all that singing, um, arts, all that stuff is what they show on TikTok. So it's just poisoning. But it's run by the state government of China. And we have very, very different long term goals. They don't care about profits at all. And the other thing I don't do is I don't allow, I use X occasionally, right, Twitter, formally. I always had a Twitter account, that turns into an X account, I still have that account. When it comes to sharing pictures or something like that, at one point I recently was asked to permission the app X to gain access to my library, my photo library. And I was like, no, I don't think I trust Elon to have access to my entire photo library with all my kids' photos, because guess what? That's a private company. It's run by one man, Elon Musk. He's brilliant, he's a brilliant businessman, he's changed the world for the better. I don't trust him for two seconds with my data, for two seconds, and I trust the Chinese government way less than I trust Elon. So it's interesting how you make those comparisons, but nonetheless, uh, Biden and Xi, they have very different ideas, man. And and there's never gonna be you know uh, an agreement and it's just making sure that things don't escalate, I think, at this point. Taiwan's going to be in the picture. Very difficult to see how that plays out, man. As I've said many times before in this program, right? You have kids, things change. I look at things on a longer-term perspective very easily because I look at Tommy, who's not even three years old. He's two years old. And, you know, you got to stretch things out to where he's not going to be my age. In 40 years, he won't even be my age. The world has to be okay at that point in time, too. Anyway, we're going to talk equities. We'll get off the politics. We'll get off China. Uh, We'll talk some equities. We'll see what's moving when we come back, folks. Market in positive territory. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got markets continuing to accelerate higher with the S&Ps up by 20, NASDAQ 100. You're up by 103 points right now. We're coming into basically the area that was the first low there at 1045 in the morning, but that was before you got the sell-off that began at 1 o'clock. That price level was about 50 points higher from where we're at right now. Pretty remarkable you get it all back. That was a one-two punch, man. A very weak Treasury sale. A Fed that comes out, and I think the market's figuring out that, hey, guess what? The Fed just pivoted. The bar is going to be very high. And that's why I keep talking about yields. And that's why you see the NASDAQ 100 continue and accelerate one, up 113 right now. And yeah, I mean, look at that. Look how it lines up. Now, what did I, what did I shift it around a little bit? That's on a five minute basis. Let me see. Yeah, look at this thing, man. Look at this channel line. Now, you're slightly above, and this is where things get to be an art, not a science, right? Where the price level is right now correlates to when this acceleration began on May 4th to lower prices on the 10-year. You take that peak, you line up the peak from July 19th, you line up the highs that we had at the end of August, early September, just missed the highs of where we were in October, where we sold off. But on a five-minute basis, you touch that line to perfection, almost to the tick. Okay, now... There's other ways you can draw that line, and I tell you everything because this is where, you know, I think it's destined. Maybe you get one more test. If it breaks within the channel line, that's where you know at least that prognosis is wrong, right? The, the idea, the trade that you have would be wrong. If you're making this trade, you're making it off the channel line, you're making it knowing that maybe you chop around on this channel line, but you're looking for it to trade higher. You've gotten a bounce to 107.24. We have markets bouncing as well. And that's correlating to yields right now under 4.6% on the 10-year. And that's off by four basis points as we get a little bit of a bounce here to 107.24. Okay, what else have we got going on in the markets? Finding the right chart here. That's not the one, excuse me. Yeah, we talked about the banks. Okay, yeah, let's talk a little bit of oil. So we were talking to Kevin Hinks yesterday, we were talking about oil, talking about how much the U.S. is actually producing for the first time. Nobody's talking about it, right? Because the Republicans have been hammering Biden on oil production and we're producing the most ever more than trump and meanwhile democrats are about climate change so the last thing they want to talk about is we're burning all the fossil fuels but nonetheless we are producing more oil than ever before you jump over to the price of crude you got crude right now up about a dollar at 76.66 but boy it's been a one-way trip from 95 dollars down to 76 we get a little bit of a lift 
maybe seventy dollars is the next price point, man. We're up to the an area that you could consider an area of height, ice. That was an area of support in the beginning of the year, turned into a little bit of an area of resistance in the middle of the year, and we're right back to that price point. Seventy-five to seventy bucks, maybe that's the next price point. We jump over the headline, oil shocks and silicon shortages, the high cost of geopolitics, and it's talking about oil among and other things in here. Uh, but pretty remarkable, right? In terms of the price of natural gas, what's happened and what's reverberated after the war. I mean, talk about panic, right? To put it lightly. Let's check back in on gold. There's gold. Really struggling, man. Yeah, down off 21 bucks, quite a run from 1821 to above 2000, pulls back a bit to 1948. But boy, you know, just on a Fibonacci basis, man. Look for that 382. There it is. We're a few bucks away from it. 1945. That kind of correlates to where it was in the month of August and September as well. If you haven't checked out my dad's gold report, folks, great time to do it. Sign up over the weekend and you gain access to Monday's new report. You gain access to the archives that are out there as well. And as I mentioned, that Biden and Xi will be meeting November 15th. Mr. Pesavento. No correlation, but nonetheless, the same day. Uh, and it's coming up, man, five days from right now. This is next Tuesday, folks. So we go over the weekend, we come back, you have Monday, and then you have Tuesday. He kicks things off at 8 a.m. So you're almost running out of time. The cost is $295, so the, he'll be in there from 8 a.m. till 12 noon. So it's a four-hour live trading session. He'll go over how he kind of gets ready at 8 a.m. prior to the market open. And the reason why he likes to do it in the morning, folks, is because... That's where all the action is, in his opinion. Okay, he's not a big trader past 12, 1, maybe 2, but usually the morning action, he's doing his program at 1 o'clock, usually, right? So the morning is where he likes to trade. That's where it's been set up. 8 till noon, it will be archived. You also gain access to his Fibonacci 24 7 newsletter. Now, I'll tell you, folks, you gain access to the newsletter for a month. That's a $97 value right away, an outstanding newsletter Larry puts out. He puts out a tremendous amount of content over the weekend. Tons of videos, tons of charts, his trade what you see report with the charts of the week, talking about futures, um, talking about the Magnificent Seven, talking about the charts of the week that he's assembled. So you get the weekly report over the weekend. But the cool part is you'll gain access for a month from the date of the webinar. So you're going to gain access from November 15th to about December 15th because the webinar takes place November 15th. But if you sign up today, your newsletter starts today. We just started today, and then everybody gains access to no, um, for a full month following the date. So sign up today. You'll gain access over the weekend. You'll get to go to the live trading event on Tuesday with Larry from 8 till 12. He does these about once every few months, and um, we may do more of them because, you know, Larry enjoys it. I know people learn a lot of them, but he does one right now every few months. And the uh, last one he did, I think, was in August, and it's November just that quickly. So, yeah, check it out on the front page of TFNN. Five days from right now, and five days is going to go by quickly when today's already Friday, and this thing begins Tuesday at 8 in the morning sharp with Mr. Pezzavento. And yeah, the market continuing to climb, man. Absolutely remarkable remarkable that it gets back so much yesterday's losses. But, you know, keep your eye on the yields because the market, uh, the market, I think, is staying focused on the fact that the bar is going to be very hard for the Fed to hike, even if the chairman is saying that the bar, I mean, that's what the chairman's saying, right? He's saying, basically, we're going to be data dependent, which basically means at some point, we'll reach a point that inflation could be too persistent that we'll need to hike again. That point that they'll need to reach is probably above where the market will get in terms of inflation at this point. They'll probably be able to just stay where they are and they're actually probably going to need to cut at some point because their policy rate is already restrictive. And if inflation just begins to decrease a little bit, their policy actually becomes more restrictive once they've decreased growth in inflation if they keep their rate where it is. And that's going to be the part that I think they, people are going to struggle with, that how quickly the cuts may come because the Fed is going to argue – and this is going big picture, three, six, nine months down the line, okay? Where it is is a big question. But they are going to argue that they are still being restrictive even though they're cutting. And that is where I think you could see a real acceleration if we get to that point. And, 
you know, I keep bringing it back to the fact when I heard Chairman Powell's words saying that the risks are now greater to hiking. Well, geez, it's got to be a pretty consistent number that's spiking. If you're telling me the risk of hiking is greater and you're already at 5.5%, theoretically, our star could be at 5% and they're still restricted. And I don't think anybody's arguing that the economy is growing at 5%, even with that 4.9% number in one quarter. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Boy, you got quite a market. NASDAQ 100 up 8 tenths percent, make it 0.84. We're making session highs as we speak right now. And don't be surprised if we challenge these highs of yesterday, man. And you're coming into basically the high 15,417. That's going to be the high of this bar that you began at 1 o'clock. You got it all back, man, from that 1 o'clock acceleration down to 15,000. 200 and change, and we're pushing 15,400 so far this morning. Uh, not adding to those gains, whoops, TTD, the trade desk. Uh, they get 10 bucks of it back from their lows yesterday, but boy, they missed on numbers, they missed on forecasts, they deal with advertising. So a little bit of a scare there for the entire market from 76.80 down to $52. You're off 18%, and that's after a $10 acceleration to the upside. Revenue. They estimate revenue of at least 580 million. The market was looking for 610. You see how these smaller companies, right? And I say smaller, I mean, my goodness, taking in $600 million almost in 90 days, not bad. 
but dwarfs compared to some of the numbers of the, some of the larger companies. But they can be a little bit more volatile when you don't have as large of a sample size, right? Larger sample sizes eliminate volatility. You flip a coin a million times, it's going to be right around 50% heads and tails. You flip a coin 10 times, man, you might get 10 heads sometimes. You're taking in revenue of 500 million from X amount of customers. You're taking in 50 billion revenue from X amount of customers times 100, right? Nonetheless. Uh, yeah, so revenue beat, but they're worried when you miss by. That's a 5% miss on revenue for context. And that's where things get funky with smaller numbers because we're so used to large numbers. They say, ah, it's only 30 million. It's a 5% miss. It's unclear whether they can sustain the high growth it's realized in the medium term. Yeah, which poses a risk to the top line growth, which has been driven by both the broad strength of what they're doing. Yeah, weaker ad spending as a reason to exercise caution. Anyway, all right, folks, markets in positive territory. Keep those stops in place and uh, appreciate you starting your Friday off right here. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Then, of course, uh, Steve Rhodes, Fast Market, Larry Pesavento, my dad back to wrap things up live till three from three till four. I appreciate it, folks. Have a great